Clinical psych PhD programs are a lot of work. While all clinical psych PhD programs are not built the same way and don't all follow the exact same structure, most clinical psych PhD programs are about six to seven years long, which means that if you decide to pursue a clinical psych PhD, you're gonna be in school for a very long time. <laughs> Something that I feel like a lot of people wonder about, I know I did, is what do those six to seven years look like? And again, not all programs are structured in the exact same way. My program in particular is a very different case. The program is structured very differently than most programs. However, today I thought I would just give you a year by year breakdown of what most clinical psychology programs look like. And how I'm gonna structure that is I'm going to break down each year into three categories, academic, clinical work, and research. And for each of those categories, I'm just going to give a very general idea of what the milestones are. I wanna emphasize that this is going to be very general because there is no way I can include every exception for every clinical psych program out there in the country. But if you're considering applying for PhD programs and you kind of already have an idea of what programs you're interested in, almost every program that I have come across includes a list exactly like this on their website, both a list of what classes you're expected to take throughout your time there and a year by year breakdown of what they expect you to complete each year. That list will be much more specific to the program itself. So I highly suggest looking at those if you already have a sense of which programs you're interested in. If not, and you're just looking for a more general idea of what programs are like, this is the video for you. <laughs> so let's get started. Hey, hello, my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. So like I mentioned, I will be breaking each year down into three categories, academic, clinical work, and research. I wanna start off with just some more general notes to keep in mind for each of those domains. So as far as your academic work, when it comes to course credits, Programs can vary on how many credits they require you to have in total for your graduation, but typically most programs will require somewhere between 60 to 70 course credits. Um, so credits that you obtain through going to class and then somewhere between 20 to 30 credits that you will obtain through things like externship and doing research. So that brings the sum total for most programs to somewhere around 90 credits. With that being said, how many credits you take per semester will vary depending on a bunch of different factors, such as the minimum number of credits allowed by your program, which classes are being offered each semester and when you're expected to take them, your overall kind of plan if you have created one for how you're going to spread out your credits and take them over the course of four years. And I say four years because with most programs, you are expected to complete your actual coursework within four years. And your fifth and sixth and perhaps even your seventh year if you need or decide to extend your time in the program are dedicated to research and externship, internship and what have you. Also related to academic, I know that there are some programs that require students to take and pass um, like exams at certain points in the program in order to continue on. Not every program does that, mine does not. So even though I won't be talking about that, just know that that is something that some programs do. And if you want to know specifically if the programs you are interested do that, I suggest looking that up. In regards to clinical work, how and what kind of clinical experience you obtain through the program is going to vary widely depending on the program itself. In almost all cases, I believe you will start off working with adult clients. Some programs may also offer opportunities to work with children but if you know that you are interested in working with a specific community it will be up to you to make your preferences uh, clear up front and to seek out those opportunities and the same goes for externships in addition to seeing clients clinical work also includes individual supervision group supervision 
writing notes, writing up reports, conducting assessments. So keep in mind that clinical work is more than just seeing clients and then that's it. There is a lot of extra time needed to do clinical work that is not always presented up front. You are going to have to make time for your supervision meetings, make time for your group supervision, make time to write notes, make time to write reports. You gotta make time for all of that. Um, and that's not always told up front. So I'm telling you that all of that is stuff you have to think about when planning your schedule. And lastly, in regards to research, how much focus and effort you put into doing research that is beyond what is required of you by your program and by your lab will mostly be in up to you and this can be largely dependent on what your career goals are if you are someone who doesn't mind doing research but ultimately you know that you want to do primarily clinical work and have very little to no involvement in academia whatsoever then you may just do what is asked of you and what is required of you and leave it at that and that's totally fine um, but if you are someone on the opposite side of that spectrum and while you don't mind doing clinical work, you know that academia has your heart and that's what you want to do for the rest of your life, then you're going to want to put some serious effort into building your research background. And you will have to do that on top of the clinical work that is required by your program. All right, so starting with year one, you just started your program, you're starting your classwork right out the gate you're probably gonna have to take somewhere between nine to 12 credits per semester. I've seen a few programs that suggest 15. I do not. I recommend max 12, but depending on your program and if you have time to take those extra credits or not, or if you feel like you can manage 15 credits, then by all means take 15 credits. But somewhere between nine and 12 most likely is where you will start off. Moving on to clinical work. When you start seeing clients in your first year, will depend on your program but you will most likely start seeing at least a few clients in your first year two three maybe four maybe more if your program is much more rigorous and just wants to throw you to the wolves um but probably somewhere between two to four clients in your first year is where you will start and you will most likely start seeing those clients through some sort of therapy program or service that is offered by your school and then research researching your first year is basically just you doing the legwork to start working towards an actual study of some kind you will probably start helping on a couple of projects in your lab um, if you haven't already you will start doing the early work of your master's thesis so doing your lit review developing your methods all of that i know not every program calls it a master's thesis but everyone I speak to calls it a master's thesis because that's basically what it is and you're gonna want to make some decent progress on that in your first year as much progress as you can manage so yeah essentially end of year one you have completed somewhere between 18 to 24 credits maybe even up to 30 credits if you are just amazing like that um, you have started seeing a few clients and you have started working and making progress on your thesis as well as perhaps some other projects in your lab. Congratulations, you made it to year two. <laughs> year two is pretty much a repeat of year one. Academic wise, you're gonna be taking somewhere between nine to 12 credits, maybe even up to 15. Um, clinical work, more than likely you will be doing the same thing you did in year one. You may be working with the same clients, you may be working with different clients, but you will probably have just a few at a time. And as far as research goes, you will probably want to be finishing up your thesis to submit and defend it by the end of the year. So end of second year, you have now completed somewhere between 40 and 50 of your 90 credits. You are continuing to work with clients. You are now realizing whether or not therapy is your thing, <laughs> whether you like it, whether you hate it, whether you don't know how to feel about it yet, who knows? And you have defended your thesis, hopefully all while still, if you are someone who is super research focused, continuing to work on other research projects and maybe even presenting at conferences and submitting to journals, that's all a thing for you. Moving on to year three. So at this point, class is class. Again, somewhere between nine to 12 credits. Hopefully at this point, you no longer have to try to cram 15 credits into a semester, but if that's your vibe, that's your vibe. Go ahead, do your thing. Um, but yeah, nine to 12 credits 
it is what it is. As far as clinical work goes, again, much of the same. You're probably seeing clients through a program at your school. And again, you may be seeing the same clients, you may be seeing different clients, but either way, it is most likely going to be through a program at your school or a program that your school is connected to. While you are continuing your clinical work in your third year, you are also going to start applying for externships for fourth year. And this is where you really wanna start thinking about what kinds of communities and groups of people you want to be working with, seeking out externships that cater to those communities and to your interests to make sure that you are getting the clinical experience that you think will serve you best in the future. And as far as research goes, this could be a kind of weird in-between year depending on what your goals are. So if you are someone who is super interested in academia and wants to focus on building your research background, then you're gonna wanna continue to submit to conferences, submit to journals, get some publications, do some presentations, and really just focus on building, building, building your research background. You might even start some new projects, um, but you can also use this time to begin working on your dissertation, kind of just figuring things out, doing other work in your lab, whatever it is you feel like you wanna do with this year, it's really up to you. Um, I will say that as far as APA requirements go, there are requirements that you do present at least once, I believe, at a, or twice at a conference. I have to double check, but I think there, APA has requirements <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. There is a minimum requirement for how many conferences you present at and how many publications you have. But yeah, point is keep those in mind that you wanna be hitting those benchmarks for APA. So you've made it to the end of year three, you're at the halfway point and you're cruising, hopefully. <laughs> Starting year four, as far as academics are concerned, you will probably still be registered for somewhere between nine to 12 credits. However, at this point, you should probably have the vast majority, if not all of your actual coursework done. And so the bulk of those nine to 12 credits are going to be related to your externship. Speaking of externship, yay, you're on externship. Externship is basically you doing clinical work, but at a site that is not related to your school or program. So you could extern at a hospital, you could extern at a community practice, you could extern pretty much anywhere that is included on whatever externship listing site you're using to find externships. I know of the one we use in New York and New Jersey, but different states use different websites. I don't know them all, but whatever is listed on those websites, you are going to be at one of those sites doing your externship. And most externships are two days a week. So you will be at your externship two days a week, and then you will be on campus doing whatever else you have to do, classwork, research, whatever, the rest of the week. And then as far as research goes, you really wanna start focusing in on your dissertation now. You want to confirm your dissertation committee and possibly even submit your dissertation proposal. So ideally by the end of fourth year, you have completed all of your coursework, you have now done your first externship and you have confirmed your dissertation committee and maybe even gotten your dissertation proposal approved. Year five, as far as academics go, this is really the year to just finish up any remaining credits that you may have left. If you don't, even better. Clinical work, you are on a second externship. Preferably, it is not the same externship that you were on the year before. Um, I don't even know if that's allowed, but you are continuing to build your clinical experience and skills. In fifth year, if you have decided that you want to be done with the program in six years. You don't want to extend. You don't need to extend because you don't have any circumstances going on in your life that would require it. Then this is going to be the year that you apply to internship. <laughs> Anytime I start to talk about internship, my anxiety levels tend to start to increase. So I'm gonna keep the internship talk to a minimum. Just know that this is the year you are going to apply to internship if you intend to be done with your program in six years. Um, yeah. 
and research really is just focused on your dissertation at this point so by the end of fifth year you are done with coursework you have completed two externships and you are making some really strong progress on your dissertation year six we're almost to the end okay so year six is where things can start to get a little murky depending on what you have decided to do with your life if you have decided that you are not extending your time in the program and six years is it you're done you're out you're gone then you have no classes this year and you are now on internship internship is essentially a full-time job for the entire year you are working at whatever site you matched with and hopefully it is a site that you really wanted and that you love um, so that you can actually enjoy your time there so that is essentially what you're doing in your sixth year if you have decided that you are going to finish your program in six years if you decided to take an extra year or so or you decided that you needed to take an extra year because life happens and it was unavoidable then you will probably also not be taking classes but you may instead be on a third externship what you're doing research wise in year six can be really dependent on how much progress you made the year before so i've heard from senior students that if you intend to be on internship in your sixth year in my case it would be fourth year because of how my program is set up um you will want to have your dissertation completed the year prior so that when you are on internship you are not doing any research whatsoever you can just focus on being on internship because that doing that is much easier than writing a dissertation while you are on internship however if you did not make much progress the year before or you just realized that your dissertation is a much bigger beast than you thought it was going to be then you will probably still be working on it writing it up all of that and you will probably not defend it until the end of your sixth year which is perfectly fine either way at the end of your six you are in one of two places either you are done and you will be graduating at the end of the year because you have finished all your coursework, you went on internship, you defended your dissertation, or you will have applied to internship and will be going on internship the following year. Whether or not you defend your dissertation this year is entirely up to you. And from that point on, you may graduate the year after or the year after that or the year after that. It just depends on how long you take to finish your program. Although I do know that most programs have a time limit on how long you're allowed to take to finish your program, so keep that in mind. But yeah, you're done. <laughs> well, done. Once you're graduated, postdoc and studying for the ECCP is a whole nother thing and I can't even think that far ahead right now. So yeah, in essence, you're done. So that is all. That is a year by year breakdown generally of what you can expect in a clinical psych PhD program. Again, I am reiterating that not every program is exactly the same. Actually, I don't think any program is exactly the same. There is a lot of variation. So if you already know which programs you're interested in, definitely take a look at their pages, look at what they require specifically for their program and how they break it down each year and what milestones they expect you to reach. But hopefully this video was helpful to you if you are just someone who is considering applying to PhD programs or if PhD programs are something you want to do in the future and you already are aware of that but you're just a few years away from it um like if you're an undergrad student or something who knows but yeah that's it so with that being said thank you for watching especially if you made it all the way to the end I truly appreciate it uh leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos as always, like, comment, subscribe, and click that little notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. And I'll see you in my next one.